I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in the song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma, like an extremely hot ocean shape, like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots, they are real. This energy released is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares, so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field into a thin tail. This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would effect is your electricity because you rely on this so much it would disrupt human life you see because earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power humans would be overturned if one of these storms hit the earth electricity and internet would not work all things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices no refrigerators or any other household appliances even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes earth preventing blackouts we forbid humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form a cool event humans experience from many solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform i'm the life-giving sun you all need me to live but i am unpredictable so solar storms i give i am the sun the center of your solar system i do erupt intense high energy radiation this radiation i expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in the song and why you should care I'm a star called the sun. I'm the center of our solar system. You Seven point eight percent helium HE. I'm a 
star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy My core is 25% of my total mass And 27 million degrees my energy is the reason there is life on earth There'll be no charge cause I'm totally free My mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system Nothing in our system's hot as me I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system
I'm EBLMJO555-57AB. My name's Trappist1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight. I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star. I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far. Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star, that's me. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2 Composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true My name is Pollux, a red giant star here Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear R136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far. Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size you can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky we're all stars we're all stars our colors vary you know we're made mostly of hydrogen and helium here we go
Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Goldilocks zone is a habitable zone in an area around a star you know. The zone is not too hot and it's not too cold for liquid water to exist so life can grow. There is only one planet we know so far that is teeming with life, of course. That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away. There would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water's the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. System and we revolve around the sun. Join us to learn about the different planets. Now sing along and have some fun. My name is Mercury. I'm the second hottest planet, but the closest one to the sun. A year on my surface is 88 days. I'm the smallest, but lots of fun. My name is Venus. I'm the hottest planet, but the second planet from the sun. I'm the brightest planet in our solar system, and I'm too hot for anyone. My name is Earth. I'm the planet you live on, and the third planet from the sun. I'm the only planet with organic life, so take care of me, cause we're all one. There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name is Mars I am red in color And the fourth planet from the sun I have the highest mountain in our solar system A volcano named Olympus Months. My name is Jupiter, I am covered in clouds and I'm the fifth planet from the sun. My giant red spot is a raging storm, as for a size I'm the biggest one. My name is Saturn, I am brown in color, I'm the sixth planet from the sun. Just in.
that the sun once in 84 Earth years and was discovered in 1781. My name is Neptune, and also blue in color. I'm the eighth planet from the sun. And I'm the last gas giant in our solar system, and I'm also the coldest one. There are eight planets in the solar system And we revolve around the sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun This is a size comparison of objects in our universe We'll start with the smallest And go to the largest Most well-known objects We know of course I am Ceres I am a dwarf planet Maki Maki's a dwarf planet As well but didn't plan it I am Haumea A dwarf planet in this group Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Aries is a dwarf planet in this mix. The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow! Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow. Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big. Check out Planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice, and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Tories, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.Y. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way galaxy, and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with glee. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I must start with a circumstellar disk from the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU. Now this. I'm found in the constellation of Musca, hear this I'm a B-type star with an exoplanet that does orbit I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see It is HD 100546B 
I'm HD 100546B. I was discovered at the very large telescope in Chile. Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf located in the disk around my star on my orbital course. I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure. My mass is 752 Jupiters. One orbit takes 249 years around my star. I'm 53 AU away from my star, that is far. My discovery was announced in 2014. That's all I have to report, that's enough about me. I am back again, it's HD 100546. Let me tell you a bit more about my disk. My circumstellar disk was observed by the Hubble telescope. Which should spiral patterns, what they mean, no one really knows. My disc is fairly flat with a circular shape With a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet How great! When looking at the night sky try to locate The constellation of Musca But you have to look late I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc My name is AG100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc From the constellation of Musca Now hear this We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman, I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass And 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown We orbit around a common center or around one another So you'd understand better With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far And from a distance we're so close we look like one star I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star You cannot see me with the naked I, though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth And I'm the closest star to the sun For what that is worth Discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins, I'm sure In South Africa at the Union Observatory In Johannesburg My Latin name Proxima Centauri Means when this is defined The nearest star of Centaurus That's all that's assigned We're Alpha Centauri The closest the star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity I'm a supermassive black hole Found in the center of almost all massive galaxies I'm a supermassive black hole There are theories of how I'm formed Come and join me and see Stephen Hawking theorized its role. 
stellar black hole But let's first see why a star exists before it loses control The pressure from nuclear fuel in the core pushes outward so greatly While a force of equal power pushing in is caused by gravity This equal pressure does create the star's main sequence stage This means the star is stable in its present burning age When stars with your sun's mass run out of nuclear fuel in its core It becomes a red giant thing Starts with 25 times the mass of your solar system sun Runs out of nuclear fuel, its gravity crushes a core and it becomes A stellar black hole, it's the most common type in the universe After the chorus, I'll tell you how I'm created, of course I'm a supermassive black hole Found in the center of almost all massive galaxies I'm a supermassive black hole There are theories of how I'm formed Join me and see I'm a supermassive black hole The third type of black hole seen Believed to be found in the center Of any major galaxy A black hole's a region of space Where force of gravity so strong That nothing, not even light can escape You've learned this in this song How I acquired my mass Is still yet to be determined And astronomers are still working On how I'm formed, that's certain Some think I'm formed from the collapse Of massive clouds of gas of galaxies with mass My parts start with the accretion disk orbiting around me It's superheated gas and dust swirling around the singularity The singularity is the very center of a black hole you see Made up of matter collapsed into a region of infinite density The event horizons the radius around a singularity Where energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity The innermost stable orbits the last place material orbits safely Blasting particles of radiation up from my poles as you can see These are relativistic jets and my last part I'll talk about Now it's time to sing with me, do it loud without any doubt I'm a supermassive black hole Found in the center of almost all massive galaxies I'm a supermassive black hole There are theories of how I'm born Come and join me and see Rigel, a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy in the year of 1781. He discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine. Million years as for an estimate that's fine I've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel Becoming a super giant after I expanded and I cooled I expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova Here is more, leaving a neutron star or black hole But no one knows for sure I'm classified as a blue-white super giant star How fun, which is a hot luminous star That's bigger than your sun I belong to the Orion constellation Locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun My brightness is so grand But I'll vary slightly in brightness until the day I'm done I'm thought to be 18 to 24 times Times more massive than your sun My radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference Which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference My surface temperature is 12,100 kK Meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI I say The next time you're out at night look for Orion in the sky Look for the hunter's leg, I'm bright to the naked eye My name is Rigel 
a blue-white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel, a blue-white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. This is a solar expedition on renewable energy We'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity Our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free Let's harness this power through silicon into batteries What is solar power? It's the conversion of energy From our sunlight into electricity Our sun's a natural nuclear reactor you should know It's the most abundant energy resource on earth I'll show. Now what's a photon? They're light particles produced by the sun. They're made by nuclear fusion shot into space in all directions. It takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds for a photon to run before it reaches our earth from the surface of our sun. Photons are made of electromagnetic radiation. They're tiny packets of energy I convert into electricity for fun. On a photovoltaic cell, a solar cell you see I'm like an electrical leaf I use the sun to produce energy Solar panels are made up of me Small solar cells These cells are made from silicon Of this I will tell Silicon is a semiconductor For what it is worth And one of the most abundant elements On the planet earth In a solar cell there are three layers Shown right here I will tell you about each layer As they appear The thin top layer does contain silicon you should know and a tiny amount of an element called phosphorus I show the phosphorus has more electrons than the silicon does that means there are more electrons making this area more conductive this layer with the phosphorus gives electrons more room to roam which makes it negatively charged so it's called the end type as shown the bottom layer contains silicon and an element called boron which has fewer electrons than the surrounding silicon because of the fewer electrons, this layer is positively charged That's why it's called the P-type layer, as shown at large My middle layer is called the PN junction Soon we'll see what happens when photons hit me from the sun Silicon atoms are connected to its neighbor by four strong bonds This keeps the electrons in place, in which I'm not so fond When a photon shoots into a solar cell with enough energy It can knock off an electron from its bond, leaving a hole you see The negatively charged electron and positively charged hole Are now free to roam around But there's only one way each can go Because of the electrical field in the PN junction The electrons drawn to the N-type And the hole is drawn to the P-type They run the mobile electrons are collected By metal strips at the top of the solar cell From there they flow to the external circuit To power a light bulb I tell They flow through and return to the conductive electron sheet on my back then they return from where they came from with no waste that's a fact a single solar panel has many solar cells to create more energy in a small space to keep your home running well when too much energy is produced it gets sent back to the electrical grid to help produce more electricity for some other kid the Sun produces more energy each hour than we will ever need there's so many ways that we can create renewable energy this is a solar expedition on renewable energy we'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free let's harness this power through silicon into batteries i am the y canis majoris one of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy This is an interstellar course I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 When French astronomer Jérôme Lalande Locked me in my recordings begun A red class M hypergiant's what I'm classified as Now let's focus a bit closer on what makes up this star class Hypergiant stars show tremendous luminosities and have very high rates of mass loss.
almost by stellar winds you see My distance from the earth is about 4,000 light years away One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles I'd say I used to be the largest star in the universe you see Until some hyper giants like you ice got tied dwarf me I am B.Y. Canis Majoris One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am B.Y. Why can't it's Majoris? My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky, you'd have to use the telescope, you can't see me with the naked eye. If you have a telescope, point to do the constellation of Canis Major, and look to the left of the Delta Star for a fixation. One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am B.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course Scientists think I'll explode into a super Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red supergiant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation After the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel that's what they are helium has a Accumulated in my core so well And hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells When my outer shells expand I take on a red color Because I'm cooler than I was I'm happy to discover Red supergiants are the largest known stars in the universe And I'm expected to supernova onto the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel without even 
I'm trying When that happens to a star as massive as me The entire star collapses and explodes as a supernova you see When I do supernova I'll create quite a sight Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova Wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse my totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this This celestial event is called the solar eclipse Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this A solar eclipse is caused by the moon, that is me I'm passing between the sun and the earth till black is what you see Here are several stages and some visual tips That you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse Stage one is called a partial eclipse is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this and stage two is called bailey's beats which are bright spots of light it's when low lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through that's right stage three is sometimes called the diamond ring this stage is key in which marks the last few seconds before totality the last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low lying valleys creates a single of light on the side of the moon the fourth and most important stage is called totality when the moon completely covers the disk of the sun this is what you see then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the bailey's beads what's once had shown but before you see this celestial event there's a few safety precautions for eye injuries to prevent this is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this On Monday, August 21st, 2017 There's a total solar eclipse North America will see But the totality you wanna see can only be observed From Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina So I've heard the path Totality is 70 miles wide, they say Seen in 14 states in the continental US of A Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there And please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online So protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must Here's a penumbra, a partially shaded outer region Surrounding the umbra, a fully shaded inner part that's darkened a partial eclipse is what you're seeing right here When only part of the luminary of a celestial body is dark in there This is a total eclipse, it's red on your screen It's when the whole of the disk of the sun is covered, that's what it means This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse my totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this.